Hi, I'm Victoria Davis from the Healthy Home Program. You already know that the cleaning products that you can buy at the supermarket are expensive, but you might be surprised to know that some of them are extremely toxic. There are simple alternatives that you can make that are much cheaper and they can keep your home clean while keeping your family and your pets safe. We're doing a series of short films with recipes for non-toxic uh, cleaners with just three ingredients or less. Here's a short video now. Please have a look. Hi, I'm Adam for the Healthy Home Program. I'm going to show you a commercial all-purpose cleaner and then I'm going to show you how to make a non-toxic all-purpose cleaner using three ingredients including water. First we'll look at the commercial cleaner which was purchased off the shelf at a grocery store Whenever you use a product, it's important to read the label first to reduce your risk of injury and to use it properly and safely. Companies producing commercial cleaners are not required to list all the ingredients on the label. So you need to pay attention to the cleaning instructions. We found the ingredients online because they're not on the label and they include water, dipropylene glycol butyl ether, ethanolamine, loramine oxide, fragrance, alkyl dimethyl, <clears throat> benzyl ammonium chlorides, an alkyl dimethyl benzyl ammonium chloride, dicanol, ethanol, and C1 acid yellow number 23. The label also reads, warning, causes substantial but temporary eye injury. Do not get in eyes, on skin or on clothing. Wash thoroughly with soap and water after handling and before eating drinking, chewing gum, or using tobacco. Prolonged or fr frequently repeated skin contact may cause allergic reactions in some individuals. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency recommends wearing gloves when using all-purpose cleaners. And the EPA reminds the user not to mix different cleaners. For example, mixing products containing bleach and ammonia can produce a poisonous gas. It is also recommended that you have good air circulation in the room by opening windows or running a fan. The EPA also notes that many of the all-purpose cleaners are highly poisonous if swallowed. Some contain sweet-smelling chemicals that attract your pets and can be poisonous to them. So now I'm going to show you how to make the non-toxic all-purpose cleaner. The tools you will need to clean are an empty spray bottle, a measuring cup, and a tablespoon. You will need two ingredients the liquid soap, liquid Castile soap such as Dr. Bronner's or Vermont soap. Um, it can be purchased in many co-ops and health food stores and it's the most expensive ingredient we're going to use but you only need a little bit so it goes a long way. So you start with a clean empty spray bottle and then you use your funnel to mix one tablespoon of liquid soap. You then add the one cup of water and you want to do it before the vinegar so that it doesn't clump. And then you you add two-thirds of a cup of the white vinegar, which vinegar is a natural disinfectant. And that's all you have to add. If you prefer a scented soap, you can add an essential oil that's a scent that you like. Um, or you can buy pre-scented Castile soaps. So the commercial cleaner costs $3.29 and this costs $0.64 cents for the same quantity. And you just spray and use it just like you would the commercial cleaner. From the Healthy Home Program, clean safe and save. Hi, I'm Adam for the Healthy Home Program. I'm going to show you a commercial tub and tile cleaner and a non-toxic tub and tile cleaner made from two ingredients. First we're going to look at the commercial cleaner which was purchased off the shelf at a grocery store 
Um, whenever you use a product, it's always important to read the label first to use the product safely. Companies producing commercial cleaners are not required to list all of the ingredients on the label, so you need to pay attention to the cleaning instructions to reduce your risk of injury. So here's the commercial cleaner, and on the cleaner you have the ingredients listed, and they're water, alkyl polygluoside, dipropylene glycol and butyl ether, alcohol ethoxylate, polyacrylic acid, sodium hydroxide, and fragrance. The label reads, caution, eye irritant. Keep out of reach of children. Do not reuse empty container. Since this is an eye irritant, you should wash your hands after use. Now I'm going to make um, our own all-purpose non-toxic tub and tile cleaner. So the tools you're going to need are a small jar or a bowl to mix them in, a fork, the measuring cup, and a tablespoon. Um, you only need two ingredients, the Dr. Bonner's or Vermont's Castile um, soap, and these can be purchased in most health food stores or co-ops. Um, and it's the most expensive ingredient we'll use, but it's um, a big bottle and you only need a little bit. Um, so in the bowl, we mix a quarter of a cup of baking soda. And then while stirring with a fork, you mix about a tablespoon of liquid soap. Mix it all together to get a paste out of it. Just add a little more if you need it. So you want it to get it to the consistency of frosting, which is what we have now. And so to use this, you just place a little bit of it on a rag, and then just take it and use it as a scrub on your tile or your bathtub or sink. And you can just scrub away the, the dirt and then rinse it with water. And so the commercial cleaner costs $3.29 for the container, and this costs $2.20 for the same amount. From Healthy Home Program, clean safe and save. Hi, I'm Rachel for the Healthy Home Program. I'm going to show you a commercial window cleaner, and then I'll show you how to make a non-toxic window cleaner using just one ingredient plus water. First, we'll look at a common commercial window cleaner that was purchased off the shelf at a grocery store. Whenever you use a product, it's always important to read the label first to use the product safely. Companies producing commercial cleaners are not required to list all the ingredients on the label, so you need to pay attention to the cleaning instructions to reduce your risk of injury. On the label, the ingredients are not listed, but it says, keep out of reach of children and pets. On the website, the ingredients are listed as water, isopropyl alcohol, 2-hexocyethanol, VDET EGM, sodium C1417 sec alkyl sulfonate, ammonium hydroxide, propylene glycol, Mirapol surf S210, fragrance, and blue dye. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency says that commercial window and glass cleaners may be irritating to the eyes, skin, nose, and throat. If swallowed, it may cause drowsiness, unconsciousness, or death. Now I'm going to show you how to make your own window and glass cleaner. You will need a spray bottle, a funnel, and a measuring cup. The only ingredients you will need are white vinegar, which you can purchase in any grocery store, and water. So to start, take your spray bottle in the funnel and measure one half cup of vinegar. And 
and then add two cups of water. Then you mix it up, put the lid on, and you're ready to go. So to use your non-toxic window and glass cleaner, you just need to find yourself a dirty window and some crumpled newspaper. Just like a commercial cleaner, just spray it on. and use the newspaper to create a lint-free shine. If you have been using commercial cleaners, to clean your windows, they may have a waxy film on them, so you'll need to use regular soap and water to clean that film off before using the non-toxic window and glass cleaner. The, the commercial cleaner costs $4.19. For the same quantity, the non-toxic cleaner costs 10 cents. That's a great savings. For the Healthy Home Program, clean safe and save. Hi, I'm Joe Tar from the Healthy Home Program. I'm going to show you a commercial drain opener and I'm going to show you how to make a non-toxic uh, drain opening opener using a zip it, water and baking soda and some vinegar and also a household plunger. First we'll look at a common commercial drain opener which is here. <clears throat> it was purchased at a local grocery store. Whenever you use a product it's always important to read the label first to use the product safely. Companies producing Commercial cleaners are not required to list all the ingredients on the label, so you need to pay attention to the cleaning instructions to reduce your risk of injury. This label reads, Danger, keep out of reach of children. Injuries to eyes, skin, mucous membranes on contact. Harmful if swirled. Avoid splashing. Do not use if with ammonia, toilet bowl cleaners, or non-liquid plumber clog. As splashing or release of hazardous ga gases may occur, clean up spillage immediately. Then when using a commercial drain opener, always wear protective gloves goggle and goggles. Also make sure there is good air circulation in the room. Now I'm going to show you how to make a non-toxic drain opener. First I'll show you a maintenance technique to show you how to clear up a sluggish drain. So you simply dump some baking soda, maybe half a cup, into the drain. just like that. And then you add some white vinegar, maybe a cup. The reaction from the two chemicals helps clear the drain. After about 10 to 15 minutes, you follow up with some boiling water, maybe three cups. If you have a serious clog, you can use a plunger or a zip it. So you just insert the zip it down through like so. And you get it and you just keep going down and down as much as far as you can get it. And you just pull it straight back up again. And as it comes up, it can grab whatever in your sink. So it has a little bit there. So if you had a serious clog, the sink could be filled up with gunk like that. When you have a plunger and you need to unclog your sink, you stop with one of the sides of the, the double sink with this tool here and then the other side you just plunge it. So right now our sink is clogged so we're going to plunge it 
I did some more. The commercial cleaner costs $4.79. The non-toxic cleaner with just baking soda and white vinegar costs 60 cents when you buy it like this and you mix it all down to use it. And a plunger is free if you already have one. From the Healthy Home Program, clean, safe, and save. Hi, I'm Joanne for the Healthy Home Program. I'm going to show you a commercial fabric softener and then I'm going to show you how to make a non-toxic uh, softener using uh, ingredients in your home. First we'll look at the uh, common fabric softener uh, that was purchased right off the shelf in the local grocery store. Whenever you use any type of cleaning product it's uh, very important to read the label first um, to use the product safely. Companies that produce these commercial products are not required to list all the ingredients on the label. So you need to pay attention to the instructions to reduce your risk of injury. The warning on this label says liquid fabric softener can increase fabric flammability using more than recommended can increase this effect. Do not use this product on children's sleepwear or on garments that are labeled flame resistant as it may reduce flame resistance. Do not use on garments made with fluffier fabric such as fleece, velour, chenille, or terry cloth. The ingredients for this commercial fabric softener are not on the label, but according to the Environmental Working Group website, the ingredients in this product are diethyl oxy dimethyl ammonium chloride, dimethyl silox siloxins and silicones, fragrance, benzosol sol anon formic acid biodegradable fabric softening agents, pentasodium, Liquid, liquid lint green, ammonium chloride, starch, denatured alcohol, calcium chloride, and water. Now I'm going to show you how to make your own non-toxic softener. All you need is white vinegar. Vinegar is a natural fabric softener and has the added benefit of helping to break down detergent residue in the machine. In your washing machine, just add vinegar up to the fill line in the laundry softener dispenser or pour one half cup into the rinse water. Your clothes will not have the perfume smell from the commercial softener and this is great for family members who have allergies or um, skin sensitivity. It costs much less to make. The cost of the liquid softener was $5.49 as opposed to about a dollar for the same amount of vinegar. And that's a great savings. From the Healthy Home Program, clean, safe, and save. Hi, I'm Victoria Davis for the Healthy Home Program. I'm going to show you a commercial toilet bowl cleaner and then I'm going to show you how to clean your toilet in a non-toxic way using just vinegar and water and if you have a ring around your toilet we will use some black emery paper which you can get in your hardware store near the sandpaper. It's almost just like sandpaper except that it's effective underwater. So first we'll look at the common toilet bowl cleaner that you can get right off the, the grocery store shelf. Whenever you use a product it's always important to read the label first to use the product properly um, so that you keep safe. Companies producing commercial cleaners are not required to include the ingredients on the label. So you need to pay attention to the cleaning instructions so that you reduce your risk of injury. On this commercial cleaner, the label says, danger, corrosive, causes irreversible eye damage and skin burns, harmful if swallowed. Do not get in eyes on skin or on clothing. Wear protective eyewear, that's safety glasses or goggles, protective gloves, and protective clothing. It sounds like you're working at a super fun site, but this is just cleaning your toilet. And it goes on to say, wash thoroughly with soap and water after handling and before eating, drinking, chewing gum, using tobacco, or using the toilet. In other words, you don't want to get that on your skin. 
remove and wash contaminated cloth clothing before reuse. Keep out of reach of children. Do not use with chlorine bleach or any other chemicals. The, the ingredients are not shown on this label, and it's such tiny print, it's hard to read anyway, but I did find the ingredients online, and they include water, isopropyl alcohol, 2-hexocyethanol, the debt EMG or EGM, sodium C1417, sec alkyl sulfonate, ammonium hydroxide, propylene glycol, Mirapol Surf S2510, sorry, fragrance, which of course is chemical, and blue dye, which is chemical. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to make your own non-toxic toilet bowl cleaner with just vinegar, and if you have the ring, we'll use some emery cloth. To clean the toilet bowl, all you do is you add a couple cups of white vinegar to the bowl, and then you use your toilet butt brush. Now, vinegar has disinfecting properties that are great for in the bathroom. People are so concerned about getting all the germs out of their toilet, but if you think about it, once you've cleaned it, somebody's going to come along and use it, and, and then you're back where you started from. So you really don't need nasty products to clean your toilet. Now when you're done with your toilet brush, what I do is I close the lid on it so that it will drip there. I want to leave the vinegar for a while anyway, so I'd leave it like 15 minutes or until the next use and then flush it. Now, if you wanted to give it an extra rinse, you could lift off the back of the tank, put some vinegar in there, and the next time you flushed, you'd get a nice clean rinse. Now, if you have, if you have a ring and that really bothers you, you can get rid of it. Um, you can try baking soda first, and then if that doesn't work, you can use the black emery paper from the hardware store. What you can do is you turn the valve, turn it off so it will not put water in when you flush it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the valve, and remember righty tighty lefty loosey, and I want to tighten it, so I'm going to turn it to the right. So when I flush it, notice that not as much water comes back up. So then you have greater access to the toilet, um, to the bowl. So let's try, let's try a piece of this emery cloth, and I don't want to use much because it doesn't need much. And I do have a ring in here, so I'm just going to go in there and scour it out. And that's doing a nice job of getting rid of the ring around the toilet. Now, I have read that you can use pumice, but I've also read that that scratches the ceramic. So this is a much safer, safer alternative. Okay, and when you're done with that, remember to turn your valve back on so next time you flush, you get some water in. So I'm going to turn it back to the left. It turns the water on. So if the instructions on the commercial cleaner did not scare you off, you might think about the cost of the cleaner, which is $2.99. To just use vinegar, it costs about $2.50 for an entire gallon, or about $0.65 cents for a couple cups to use in your toilet bowl. If you do have a ring around your toilet bowl, you can use the black emery paper, which I have here. This is the size of it. This is what is found in the hardware store. This costs about $2.50, and I'm just going to cut off a little piece. Oh, I take that back. It's $1.29. So we're just going to cut off a little piece to do the ring around the bowl. From Healthy Home, Clean, Safe, and Save. Hi, I'm Quinn for the Healthy Home Program. I'm going to show you a commercial carpet deodorizer, and then I'm going to show you how to make a non-toxic carpet cleaner using just one ingredient. First, we'll look at a common commercial carpet deodorizer, which was pur purchased off the shelf in a, in a grocery store. 
Whenever you use a product, it's always important to read the label first to use the product safely. Companies producing commercial cleaners are not required to list all the ingredients on the label, so you need to pay attention to the cleaning instructions to reduce your risk of injury. This label says, Caution, flammable, contents under pressure. Avoid eye contact, ingestion, or intentional misuse, such as prolonged and repeated skin contact. The instructions are to spray the foam onto the carpet, allow to dry, and do not vacuum. It also states that aerosol products should not be used near birds. There are no ingredients listed on the label, but the Environmental Working Group website states that the ingredients are fragrance, non-specific non chemicals, propellant, butane and protein, and isopropyl alcohol. These ingredients would be left on your carpet in the air for you and your pets to breathe. Now I'm going to show you how to make your own non-toxic carpet deodorizer. You need a vacuum cleaner and a substantial amount of baking soda depending on the size of your carpet. First, vacuum dirt from your carpet. Sprinkle baking powder liberally onto your carpet and leave overnight or for several hours. Baking soda naturally neutralizes and absorbs odors rather than covering them up with artificial fragrances like the commercial deodorizers. The longer the baking soda sits on the carpet, the better it will neutralize the odors. The commercial product costs $3.19. There is no information about the area of a can of this product, uh, so we cannot compare the cost to baking soda. However, baking soda is only $0.05 cents an ounce, and the commercial product is about $0.30 cents an ounce. You can also use baking soda to deodorize many other items in your home, such as your trash cans, diaper pails, cat box, or refrigerator. From the Healthy Home Program, clean, safe, and safe. Hi, I'm Quinn for the Healthy Home Program, and I'm going to show you a commercial air freshener, and then I'm going to show you how to make a non-toxic air freshener. First, we'll show you a common air freshener, which was purchased off the shelf in a grocery store. Whenever you use a product, it's always important to first read the label to use the product safely. Companies producing commercial cleaners are not required to list all the ingredients on the label, so you need to pay attention to the cleaning instructions to reduce your risk of injury and remember the word fragrance refers to chemicals not a natural scent. This label reads keep out of reach of children and pets avoid extreme heat or cold. The US Environmental Protection Agency says that air fresheners are highly flammable and also strong irritants to eyes, skin, and throat. Additionally the solid air fresheners usually cause death if eaten by people or pets. The ingredients are water, carrageenan, unspecified fragrance, sodium carbozethmethacellulose, cathon CGICP, and unspecified dyes. Now I'm going to show you several ways to make your own non-toxic air freshener. Recipe number one, you can simply put out a bowl of baking soda to capture the odors. Recipe number two, if you want to spray, combine one part vinegar to four parts water in a small spray bottle. You can add a few drops of your favorite essential oil if you wish. Or, for recipe number three, you could use straight vodka with essential oils to make a spray. Check the internet for many recipes for potpourri and other non-toxic air fresheners. If you want to use candles, remember when the label says fragrance, it's usually a chemical fra fragrance and the candles are often made of petroleum-based paraffin. The commercial air fresheners cost $1.19. The non-toxic spray made with vinegar costs about three cents. 
from the Healthy Home Program, Clean, Safe, and Save. Hi, I'm Victoria from the Healthy Home Program. I'm going to show you a commercial hand soap, and then I'm going to show you how to make a non-toxic um, alternative from just two ingredients. Um, first, we'll look at the commercial cleaner. This was bought right off the grocery store shelf. Whenever you use a product like this, it's always important to read the label first to use the prod product safely. Companies producing these products are not required to include the ingredients on the label. So you need to pay attention to the instructions on the label to make sure you're reducing your risk of injury. On this particular product, the label reads, warning for external use only. Avoid contact with dyes, keep out of reach of children. If swallowed, get medical help or contact the poison control center right of way. This is probably because this is an antibacterial soap. And the ingredients are triclosan, which is a pesticide used as an antibacterial, water, sodium xylenosulfonate, dipropylene glycol, glycerin, sodium PCA, ammonium lauryl sulfate, coca midopropyl betaine, polyquaternium 10, fragrance, which means it's an uh, unknown chemical, disodium phosphate, acetyl alcohol, aloe barbendensis leaf juice, citric acid, methylparaben, pro propylparaben, dyes green 3, and yellow 10. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration finds no evidence that triclosan added to soaps and body washes provides extra health benefits over simple soap and water. Now I'm going to show you how to make your own non-toxic foaming soap. The tools you will need are this bottle which I bought at a local uh, co-op. It, it has a foaming dispenser so it's just adding air to the soap. This costs about two dollars. I have a funnel that I'll be using. I have water and I have liquid castile soap, which you can buy in a co-op or health food store. It's a little pricey, but it's very concentrated and you don't need to use very much. So for this recipe for the foaming soap, I'm just going to take this bottle, put my funnel in, and I'm going to, to fill it up about one-third full with the castile soap. So that's about a third and then I'm going to fill it up the rest of the way with water. If you're so inclined and would like a scent in your soap, you can add a few drops of your of essential oil in your favorite scent. Essential oil is a natural product. It's made from plants, unlike fragrance. Um, when you see the word fragrance, it's usually made in a laboratory from chemicals. So I'm just gonna mix this up a little bit. And here's your foaming soap. The cost of the commercial cleaner that we saw was $2.84. The cost of this soap that you make at home, the non-toxic version, is 50 cents. That's quite a savings. From healthy home, clean, safe, and safe. Hi, I'm Rachel for the Healthy Home Program. I'm going to show you a commercial oven cleaner and then I'm going to show you how to make a non-toxic oven cleaner using just three ingredients plus water. First we'll look at a common commercial oven cleaner purchased off the shelf at the grocery store. Whenever you use a product, it's always important to read the label first to use the product safely. Companies producing commercial cleaners are not required to list all the ingredients on the label, so you need to pay attention to the cleaning instructions to reduce your risk of injury. The label reads, Danger, corrosive, contains sodium hydroxide, lye, will burn eyes and skin, harmful if swallowed, avoid contact with eyes, skin, mucous membranes, and clothing, do not ingest, use only with adequate ventilation, avoid breathing spray mist, wear long rubber gloves when using. 
In addition to what's on the label, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency recommends wearing an apron and protect protective goggles when using commercial oven cleaners. They further recommend having plenty of fresh air or ventilation while you're using the product. The ingredients are not listed on the label, but online they are listed as ethanol, 2,2-butooxyethoxy, petroleum gases liquefied and sweetened, sodium hydroxide, and ethanol 2-amino. To avoid the need to clean up your oven on a regular basis, you can use aluminum foil or place a pan under what you're cooking. At some point, you will need to clean your oven um, because of splatters or grease that may accumulate. So I'm going to show you how to make a non-toxic cleaner using four ingredients plus water. You will need a spatula for scraping out the oven, a scrubber or scrubber sponge, a paintbrush, I'm using a pastry brush, a glass bowl, a spoon, um, and measuring cups and measuring spoons. In addition to your tools, you will need just three ingredients plus water, castile soap, white vinegar, and baking soda. So first, I'm going to pour all of the ingredients into the glass bowl. So one tablespoon of Dr. Bronner's Castile soap. And then a cup and a half of baking soda. Then you're going to add a quarter of a cup of, of the white vinegar, and I'll just estimate here. And this will foam when you add it to the baking soda. That's normal. So I'm going to mix this up a little bit and then add just enough water to make a thick paste. What you're going to do with this paste is to paint it on the inside of your oven and this will help um, clean your oven. So you want it to be thick enough so that it will stick to the walls and the ceiling and the door. So you can see it's rather thick. <laughs> but we'll still be able to use our paintbrush to paint it on. So now we're over at the oven. We've got our the spatula, the scrubber. I've also got a washcloth in case of any messes. And our homemade non-toxic oven cleaner. So the first thing is to take the racks out of the oven and wash them in the sink separately. With your scraper, you can scrape out any of the um, dried on bits that might be in the bottom of your oven.
When you're uh, scraping out the bottom of your oven, it's important to use a non-metal spatula so that you don't scratch the finish on the interior of your oven. With the um, hard parts scraped out, now we're ready to paint the inside of the oven. You'll want to use your paintbrush to put a thick layer of the cleaner on all parts of the oven including the door and the the ceiling. So you can see we did not actually leave this on overnight, but we just left it on here for maybe an hour. And this baked on grease is actually coming off, which is fantastic. So this is a lot less toxic than the cleaner that you can get in the store. It, it took all of this crud off of the door. So it's working fantastic. And I'm just using a, a regular scrubby that I got in the store. Wow, I'm impressed. This is great. This was way better than it was. It was totally caked with grime. The cost of the commercial oven cleaner is $4.69. The cost of an equivalent amount of non-toxic cleaner is about a dollar. That's a great savings. From the Healthy Home Program, Clean Safe and Save. Hi, I'm Joe Tarr for the Healthy Home Program. I'm going to show you a commercial furniture cleaner, and then I'm going to show you how to make a non-toxic furniture cleaner just using water and a cloth. First, we'll look at a common commercial cl furniture cleaner, which is the Pledge Lemon Clean here, purchased at a local grocery store. Whenever you use a product, it's always important to read the label first. Companies producing commercial cleaners are not required to list all the ingredients on the label, so you need to pay attention to the cleaning instructions to reduce your risk of in injury. The label reads, Caution, keep out of reach of children and pets. The ingredients were not provided on the label, but were found online, and they include water, isopyrafin, dimethicone, isophosphonic acid, nitrogen, polysorbate 80, Sobitane, oleates, polydensin 6 on, amino methyl, propanol, fragrance, which is unspecified, pri propriety thickening agent, and mesilithionyl. Now I'm going to show you how to make your own non toxic furniture cleaner. If your furniture has a sealant on it, you'll be cleaning the sealant, which is typically waterproof urethane, not the wood. Furniture polishes do not penetrate the sealant so you're just adding polish to a layer of plastic. If you have antique wood furniture, talk to a reputable antique dealer about the best way to protect your precious pieces. For simple dusting, you just wipe down the furniture with damp cloth. So you just add a little water to a cloth. And you just wipe down furniture, the dust off of it as so. And now the rag is dirty of dust. The commercial cleaner furniture spray costs $4.59. The non-toxic cleaner costs, well, nothing if you use water and a, a damp cloth for the same quantity. That's great savings. From the Healthy Home Program, clean, safe, and save.